Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about atelectasis and how to prevent and treat it. In the previous lecture, we understood what causes atelectasis and some of the things that we learned was atelectasis occurs because of decreased transpulmonary pressures. If the absorption of air is more than the ventilation to the alveoli, loss of surfactant and pressure from the surrounding tissues. The reason you should worry about atelectasis is because it increases the work of breathing, reduces gas exchange and causes surfactant dysfunction leading to hypoxemia. In special conditions, it can increase RV afterload, increase risk of pneumonia and cause pulmonary hypoxia and inflammation. These things can sometimes result in hypotension. Atelectasis increases work of breathing by reducing FRC and reducing compliance. Therefore, to generate same tidal volume, you increased higher driving pressure. Increased driving pressure results in overstretching of the normal lungs and can result in further injury. Atelectasis results in reduced gas exchange by causing right to left shunt. And as you know that right to left shunt is less responsive to oxygen. The way your lung counters this by causing hypoxemic pulmonary vasoconstriction, reducing right to left shunt. And this happens pretty rapidly, starts within seconds and maxes out at around two hours. In humans, around 50% of the blood flow is diverted away from the hypoxemic lobes within five minutes. However, this is never complete. So there's always some degree of shunting present. There are a couple of pathological reasons which will impair the hypoxemic pulmonary vasoconstriction. That would include pulmonary inflammation like pneumonia, ARDS, sepsis, endotoxemia, etc. Hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction is good for reducing shunt because it will improve your oxygenation. However, hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction can be bad for the right ventricle as it increases the afterload. Experiments have shown that if your sets drop to 80 to 90 percent, you can have 10 to 15 millimeters mercury rise in pulmonary artery pressures. Atelectasis can cause multiple changes at cellular level, which include increased inflammation, loss of alveolar fluid clearance, impaired surfactant, local hypoxia, local immune dysfunction, and increased permeability. These all can lead to increased risk of infection in an atelectatic lung. Please review the reference given at the bottom of the slide for further details. Atelectasis can result in atelectrauma, which can result in regional mechanical injury. Because of atelectasis, the volume distribution can be higher in the normal alveoli, resulting in tidal overdistension. You can have tidal recruitment and derecruitment because these alveoli are opening and closing, and you can have stress concentration near the atelectatic alveoli. Tidal recruitment and derecruitment result in pressure and shear gradient, which can damage these cells, resulting in further lung injury. So one of the caveats in mechanical ventilation is try to maintain PEEP above the lower inflection point so that you reduce atelectrauma and reduce lung injury. Atelectasis does not cause post-op fever. In a meta-analysis, the early post-op fever was not associated with atelectasis. Nowadays, we believe that the post-op low-grade temperature results from surgically induced inflammation rather from atelectasis. Before we go further, let's examine how much pressure is required to reopen an alveoli. First thing is to break their intermolecular water bonds. And this pressure is higher if surfactant is absent. And this takes around 15 to 20 centimeter of water pressure. You have to overcome the pressure which is compressing the pulmonary unit, which will be equal to the total lung height above that alveoli, which is approximately 10 to 15 centimeter of water. You need pressure to displace the chest wall which is 5 to 10 centimeter of water. And because of the interdependency between the neighboring alveoli, you need additional 10 to 15 centimeter of water. So in total, you need around 45 to 60 centimeter of water pressure to open a collapsed alveoli. It takes less effort to keep these alveoli open than open these alveoli using a lot of pressure. One thing you have to understand that alveoli filled with debris, like in pneumonia, cannot be recruited. When you are thinking about atelectasis, examination is very important. Observe your patient for reduced chest wall expansion, displacement of trachea, and dullness to percussion. You will hear decreased breath sounds in the areas of atelectasis. However, if there is extrinsic compression causing atelectasis, you may be able to hear bronchial breath sounds as well. Chest X-ray goes a long way in diagnosing 
patients with atelectasis. You will see elevation of the hemidiaphragm, volume loss, rib crowding, mediastinal shift, including trachea, heart, and fissures, and there will be compensatory emphysema in uninvolved areas. Management of atelectasis involves reversing the four principles which cause atelectasis. So, increase your transpulmonary pressures, make sure that your ventilation is more than the absorption, prevent loss of surfactant, and reduce pressure from the surrounding tissues. To increase transpulmonary pressure, you can either decrease the intrapulmonary pressures or increase intraalveolar pressures. To decrease intrapulmonary pressures, you use mechanisms like incentive spirometry, mobilization, and upright posture. To increase alveolar pressure, use CPAP or IPPB, that is intermittent positive pressure breaths. If you're on the ventilator, use adequate PEEP to reduce atelectasis. Avoid reaching lower inflection point. You can use side breaths and recruitment maneuver to your advantage. Sitting or standing up improves atelectasis because there is more percentage of ribcage breathing in these positions. While in supine position, only 30% of your lung volumes are generated by ribcage breathing. In upright position, the numbers are around 70%. To maintain ventilation more than absorption, make sure that you take care of those secretions, use bronchodilators, and minimize your FiO2 to target sets of 90-94%. to To ensure adequate ventilation to the alveoli, use adequate PEEP or CPAP, reduce inflammation, use bronchodilator, and use proning. To prevent loss of surfactant, use lung protective ventilation, using low tidal volume which will prevent overdistension and adequate PEEP to prevent atelect trauma. Surfactant replacement in adult is not found to be beneficial. Counter the compressive forces around the lungs. Positioning is very important. Use gravity to your advantage. So make sure that head of bed is elevated. Patient is in sitting up position. Patient is not wedged in the bed. Use reverse Trudlenberg needed and use proning as needed. Brain pleurifusions or ascites if they are resulting in problems. Always examine the abdomen whenever you are dealing with atelectasis. Make sure the patient does not have alias or abdominal compartment syndrome. Make sure that you are managing the patient's pain well. Monitor the patient's volume status. Use diuretics as indicated. Prevention is better than cure in atelectasis. Make sure that your patient head of bed is elevated. You do early mobilization and have good secretion management protocol. Make sure your patient is adequately hydrated and adequate humidification is provided. Use bronchodilator when needed. Make sure your patient does deep breathing and coughing exercises and uses incentive spirometry. Incentive spirometry unfortunately has not shown to be useful by itself in upper abdominal surgery and cabbage. However, incentive spirometry when used with deep breathing techniques, directed coughing and early mobilization with optimal analgesia has shown to reduce the rates of pneumonia. ICOF is a good acronym for you to remember, which includes incentive spirometry, early mobility, head of bed elevation, mouth care, and encouraging patient to have cough and deep breath. In summary, atelectasis is a very common cause of hypoxemia in hospitals. Apart from hypoxemia, it can result in increased RV afterload and increased risk of pneumonia. Know the exam findings and use chest x-ray to diagnose this. Treatment includes increased transpulmonary pressures, making sure ventilation is more than absorption, preventing surfactant breakdown by using lung protective ventilation, and treating compressive forces from outside lungs. Since opening of the alveoli requires a lot of pressure, maintaining an open alveoli is much easier, so prevention of atelectasis is more important, so take preventive measures. Thank you.